Admiral Kizaru is going to help the Straw Hats escape Egghead Island. Sounds crazy, but this is a theory I've been playing with. With the Straw Hats' plan of leaving on the Vega Force 1 going up in smoke, coupled by the fact that we are severely outnumbered and potentially outpowered by the newly awakened demon Saturn, how are we going to get out of this situation? While the Straw Hats could fight to the death on this island, not once have any of them actually brought this idea up. I mean, Luffy, out of all people, even tried to negotiate his way out of here by trading York to the Gorosei, and since that plan fell through, things are looking pretty grim. Thankfully for the Straw Hats though, there are a plethora of wild cards here on this island that could change the outcome of this battle. We have the Ancient Robot, we have the Blackbeard Pirates, we have Caribou, we have the possibility of Dragon or the Straw Hat Grand Fleet showing up, and we even have Admiral Kizaru, who is also a wild card in my opinion. There is no way that I can accurately predict what is gonna happen in the upcoming chapters. I am not Oda. I'm just here to talk about the possibility of Kizaru turning in his Marine jacket and helping the Straw Hats out of this hellhole. Kizaru, deep down, does not want to kill Vegapunk. I feel like that's obvious based on how he's been reacting to this whole incident. And plus, he also said that to Luffy verbatim when they started clashing. Kizaru has gone through a lot of emotions in this arc. First, he had his wholesome flashback with Sentomaru during their fight. He then was talking to himself about how he wished saving an old friend was a part of his mission. He told Bonnie that he doesn't want to hurt too many people he cares about. And when he destroyed the Vega Force 1, Oda showed us just how torn Kizaru was inside about it. If he doesn't really want to kill Vegapunk, then why is he here? Why did Kizaru put himself in this position? I believe that's because this is a family affair. If you go back and look at all the flashbacks of Kizaru and Vegapunk, you can see that Vegapunk has been a constant in Kizaru's life. So now that the order to eliminate Vegapunk has arose, it makes sense that Kizaru wants to be the one who executes it. I mean, let's be real. Who would want their best friend to fall at the hands of a stranger? Which is one reason why I think Saint Saturn appearing in front of Vegapunk this latest chapter might cause Kizaru to do something no one would have expected. If you think the thought of Kizaru wanting to finish off Vegapunk personally is irrational, then let's look back at Sentomaru. Saturn said it would make more sense to just go upstairs and finish Vegapunk off quickly, but Kizaru's response to this suggestion was to turn it down. He says that he wants to deal with his friend first since he has resolved in putting his life on the line. Ignoring him would be spitting in his face. He ends off this topic by telling Saturn that he wants to do things his way. The death that Kizaru wants to provide to Vegapunk and company is to shower him in his deadly light beams. So how would Kizaru feel if instead Saturn finished off Vegapunk with his hellish demonic powers? The next thing I want to discuss is his loyalty. Why does Kizaru even care about his job now that he is faced with such turmoil? I think this answer is unclear. And I seriously mean that because his justice is unclear justice. One minute, while Kizaru is directly in front of Vegapunk, he's telling him how hard it is for him to actually do this. And then the next minute, he is shooting laser beams at Vegapunk like Yosemite Sam. If that is not unclear justice, then I do not know what is. When Sentamaru asks Kizaru why he's doing this, his response is simply that he is just a cog in the machine. If you look at the Japanese translations, he more accurately says that he is just a corporate slave. Which is interesting that Oda chose those words specifically. Since in Japan, being a corporate slave is a real problem. Japan is plagued by a brutal work culture where workers are turned into corporate slaves and are strong-armed into being loyal to their companies at the expense of even their own private lives. In Japan, there are lots of research and documentations as to how bad this mindset truly is. And the one solution against this mindset, time and time again, is simply quitting your job. Interestingly enough, Kizaru's resignation letter runs deep. So deep, in fact, that I want to turn our attention to the origin of his actual name, Borsalino. I'm sure that most of you guys already know that Admiral Kizaru's character is modeled after the Japanese actor Kunoe Tanaka, but his name Borsalino is actually based on the 1970s movie titled Borsalino. To back up this claim, during the Fisher Tiger flashback, Kizaru was actually shown wearing a Borsalino styled hat. So to sum up the movie, it's about two mobsters and their rise to power in the underworld, and once they found themselves at the top, they suddenly had a change of heart and wanted to resign. But since no one can exactly leave the mob that easily, one of the main characters ends up dying on his way out. Pretty much what I'm trying to say is that resignation and quitting were built into Kizaru's 
Borsellino's character from day one. Quitting a job isn't easy, and sometimes you need a friend to help you out. And what better friend does Kizaru have right now other than Luffy. That was a little bit of a stretch, but hear me out. Luffy is Sun God Nika. He has the devil fruit. And what is Sun God Nika? Nika is the warrior of liberation. He was known for freeing slaves. So if that's the case, then I don't see why he can't liberate Kizaru and free him from his corporate slavedom. In the last chapter, when Luffy lands his white star gun on Kizaru, he literally could have knocked some sense into him or out of him. What's interesting about the White Star Gun attack though, is that it's somewhat reminiscent of the attack Bonnie used against Vegapunk to knock his ages and experiences out of him. What if the White Star Gun isn't just another Looney Tunes-esque ability, but was also actually Oda foreshadowing Kizaru's return to common sense? While Kizaru is getting the stars knocked out of him by Luffy, he says, this is bad. And we can interpret this a lot of ways. Yes, Luffy's attack is doing a lot of damage to Kizaru, but what if he meant this is bad about something else entirely? I'm just gonna clarify this right here. I'm not trying to underplay Luffy's attack against Kizaru. I'm simply saying, what if the this is bad has a double meaning? What if the truly bad thing that Kizaru is referring to is the fact that in the very next page, Saint Saturn is now confronting Vegapunk. A lot of people are saying this arc is a mirror of Sabote. I mean, Luffy even brings it up while he's clashing with Kizaru in the beginning. If this is indeed a callback, an element we're missing is an enemy's support. Kuma started off as an enemy, but in reality, he was our greatest ally there, and he was pivotal in the Straw Hat's escape. But since he isn't here as of chapter 1094, who is going to play the Kuma role? A lot of people, myself included, believe that Kuma is on his way here to Egghead Island. Since, of course, when we last saw him, he was blasting off out of Marijuana. If Kuma does indeed show up here on Egghead Island, how is Kizaru going to react? He already felt bad about Sentamaru, Bonnie, and the Vegaforce 1, and even the thought of killing Vegapunk. So how would he feel about beating down Kuma, who in the literal sense of the word, is just a cog in the machine? And let's get this straight. We're not talking about average everyday Kuma. We're talking about Kuma who is on death's door. Akainu, last we saw, just knocked off his leg and burnt half of his face off. A minute ago, we were spitballing about how Kizaru might not like the fact that Saint Saturn is gonna do in Vegapunk. So how would Kizaru feel knowing that another one of his friends almost got killed by another one of his bosses, AKA Sakazuki. And we can't really undersell how important Kuma could be to Kizaru. I mean, come on, Kuma actually has Kizaru's laser beam installed within him. In my head canon, I can actually see Kuma, Sentamaru, and Kizaru all standing up against Saint Saturn to protect their old friend Vegapunk and help him and the Straw Hats escape this island. And now you might be wondering, Sai, if this actually happens, if this theory somehow comes true, what is the big event of Egghead Island? What is the big news that will shock the world? Well, honestly, I think the resignation of an admiral could fit that bill. I mean, just look back at Dressrosa. Fujitora bowing down to King Riku and admitting that an admiral and the world government is at fault. That was big news. Now imagine if Kizaru actually resigns here on Egghead Island and he betrays Saint Saturn. As Big News Morgans would say, this'll be a big scoop. It would really be poetic in a way if the three people who stopped the Straw Hats back on Sabote are the three people who helped them escape Egghead Island. Now, with all that being said, what do you guys think about this one in a million possibility? Do you agree with this possibility to some extent? Or no, do you think this is absolute hogwash? I would love to hear your opinions. And with that being said, my name is Sai, and I'm signing out.